Hi everybody. Now that we know how to simplify radical expressions, now we're going to add and subtract them. And then we're going to multiply and divide. But adding and subtracting is pretty straightforward. I don't think you should have a whole lot of trouble with it. Let's start with something really simple. Let's start with just a plain old algebra expression. How about if I wrote 4x minus 2y, let's make a 4x plus 2y, minus 2x. And I asked you to simplify that. I don't think you'd have any trouble, would you? You would tell me, well, these are like terms. So I can just do 4x minus 2x is 2x. And then 2y doesn't have a like term, so that's just plus 2y. So my question to you then is, what if I were to write 4 radical 2 plus 2 radical 3 minus 2 radical 2? In other words, I'm writing the same kind of expression except my x's are now radical 2's and my y's are now radical 3's. Well, it's the same situation. And the situation is this, that those that are attached to radical 2's are like expressions. They're like terms. So when I say I have 4 radical 2's and I take away 2 radical 2's, I have 2 radical 2's left, don't I? If I have 4 radical 2's and subtract 2 radical 2's, I have 2 radical 2's. And then my radical 3 is all by itself, doesn't have a like term, so that just stays the way it is. So in terms of like term, in, 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 when we talk about like terms with adding and subtracting radicals, we're talking about this radical portion giving you the like terms. So another way to look at this. Again, let's just look, use this example. We said that when we take 4 radical 2 and subtract 2 radical 2 from it, we get 2 radical 2. Okay? If I had 4x minus 2x, I'd get 2x, wouldn't I? There's two ways to get that answer. I could either just say there are 4x's minus 2x's gives me 2x's, but another way would be to factor out an x, couldn't I? If I factor out an x, I get 2 times x, 2x. Well, I actually could do the same thing here, and it's just another way of looking at it. You don't have to solve the problem this way, okay? But if we can factor out a radical 2, we'd have 4 minus 2 and factor out the radical 2. 4 minus 2 is 2 radical 2. Just another way of looking at it. But I think by far the easiest way of looking at it is just to say that I have 4 radical 2's, I'm taking away 2 radical 2's, so I'm left with 2 radical 2's. What you cannot do, and I want to stress this repeatedly, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot. You hearing me? Don't do this. You cannot add under a radical sign. You cannot do it. Cannot be done. We'll find that you can with, with multiplication, but not with addition and subtraction. Let me prove it to you. The square root of 9 plus the square root of 16 is not the square root of 25. 9 plus 16. What's the square root of 9? 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Does that equal 5? Not in my universe, and hopefully not in yours either. It equals 7. So clearly that doesn't work. So please don't do this. Please don't add things that are under a radical sign. You cannot do that. Okay? As I said, we'll be doing it with multiplication, but with addition and subtraction, it's a definite no-no. Okay? All right, let's take a look at it. Oh, about three or four more examples, and we'll be all set with this situation here. How about this one? 3 radical 6 minus radical 6 minus 4 radical 2 plus 3 radical 2. And by the way, you're noticing we're, we'll notice we're only using square roots. We're not going to do any higher roots with these, but it's exactly the same thing. If you had cube roots or fourth roots, you would do exactly the same way. The like terms would be the same things under the radical. So I have like terms here. Radical 6, radical 6. So I have 3 radical 6 minus, what's in front here? What's in front of this? It's a one understood 1 right there, isn't there? 3 radical 6 minus radical 6 is 2 radical 6. And I hope you could tell me that if I had written 3x, minus x, you would all tell me that was x with no problem, wouldn't you? 
Sure you would. Okay? Let's take a look at this next piece. Minus 4x, I'm sorry, minus 4 radical 2 plus 3 radical 2. Minus 4 plus 3 is negative 1. We don't write the 1. So there we go, right? In the same way, again, that if I had told you it was minus 4y plus 3y, you all would have told me it was negative y. Okay, so there's my answer. Let's take a look at another problem. What if I had... Um, let's see. How about if I had radical 12 plus radical 27 minus radical 8? Well, at first glance, it looks like there are no like terms, right? 1 to 12, 1 to 27, 1 to 8. But some of you should be saying, yeah, but those can be simplified. And you'd be right. These can be simplified, so let's simplify them. Radical 12, 2 times 2 times 3. 4 times 3, I can pull out a 2. So this is actually 2 radical 3. Okay? Radical 27, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. Pull out one of the 3's of the pair, and this is 3 radical 3. And then radical 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. There's a pair of 2's. Pull out a 2. Again, we're looking for pairs because these are square roots, right? Minus 2 radical 2. And then combine your like terms. I have 2 radical 3 plus 3 radical 3 gives me 5 radical 3 minus 2 radical 2, which doesn't have a like term. There's your answer. All right, one more. Make this one a little more complicated. Let's put some coefficients in front this time. Okay, what if I had 3 radical 5 minus 2 radical 80 plus 4 radical 125? A little more complicated, and don't let the numbers in front of the radical concern you, other than to make sure that you multiply by that number as well, again, uh, multiply by anything that you bring outside the radical. All right, what about 3 radical 5? Well, 5 is just 5, isn't it? So there are no pairs, which means it's as simple as it can be. So we're just going to leave it 3 radical 5. Okay? Now let's look at this. I have 2 radical 80. Well, 80 is 8 times 10, if you do your factoring. So that means we can pull out a 2. There's one pair. Here's another pair of 2's, so I can pull out another 2. So what do I get? 8 radical 5. So minus 8 radical 5. And then we've got 4 radical 125. Radical 125 is 5 times 5 times 5. That's 125. I can pull out a pair of 5's. Pull out a 5 there. 4 times 5 is 20 radical 5. If I do that math, 3 radical 5 plus 8 radical, minus 8 radical 5 plus 20 radical 5 is, what is that, negative 5 plus 20, 15 radical 5. Okay? So your key to adding and subtracting radicals is to make sure, first of all, that they're all simplified as much as they can be, and then you combine like terms based on what's under the radical signs. Those are your like terms. And I should also mention that if you have a number that has no radical sign, treat those as whole numbers. And the whole numbers can only can be combined with other whole numbers. Okay, that's adding and subtracting radicals. Thanks.